Welcome to this week's video. This week we look at Auguste Rodin's groundbreaking sculpture of Saint John the Baptist and more specifically at the bronze version dated 1881 that is now kept in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and the sculpture is slightly larger than life-size uh, which I think that's what makes it particularly poignant that it is just slightly larger than life-size and so it has that imposing quality to it so here are the five things you should know about this sculpture first of all who was Auguste Rodin he was a French sculptor who I think is well we can say unanimously considered as one of the greatest artists of his time if not as one of the greatest sculptors of all times and he is known for the precision and realism of his sculptures and probably the most well-known sculpture is the thinker Le Penseur uh, which he made in 1903 and we're showing you an illustration uh, here it was initially created as part of a larger composition uh, but yes I think it's sort of gone into art history as being one of the the greatest sculptures of all time secondly who is Saint John the Baptist St. John is the son of Zacharias and Mary's cousin Elizabeth. And we can say that St. John the Baptist is the link between the Old and the New Testaments. The Greeks call him the precursor. He is the last and the greatest of the prophets. And whilst John led an ascetic life proclaiming the coming of the Messiah and baptism in the Jordan River, he was beheaded for condemning the marriage of Herod to the divorced wife of his half-brother, thus giving old masters inspiration for dramatic and, yeah, even sanguinant paintings. St. John has always been very popular in art history and he's often represented in Christian iconography uh, with a sheepskin or a camel skin robe and accompanied by a lamb. So what we see here is actually a very stripped back version of St. John uh, literally just walking around uh, naked as a walker without a cross and just pointing his finger upwards which is a clear uh, a clear reference to uh, da Vinci's um, representation of St. John and actually that finger pointing upwards is the sole really uh, the sole gesture here that makes us identify this figure as being St. John the fourth point worth noting about this sculpture is actually talking about the reception of the piece when Rodin created it. Uh, when the sculpture was first presented in plaster in 1880, uh, it encountered a very mixed reception. Some thought that it was absolutely beautiful and marveled at the reality of how the human figure was represented and others were absolutely appalled by it and, and thought, well, there is nothing saint-like that's being uh, shown here in this sculpture. And so, yes, I think that's for various reasons, but the main reason being that um, Rodin based his sculpture on an actual person, on an Italian peasant named uh, Pignatelli. And Pignatelli used to pose for Rodin and he inspired him uh, for this figure. And Rodin himself in this in his sort of scriptures and writings described how he came to the idea of the sculpture and he writes himself as soon as I saw Pignatelli I was filled with admiration this rough hairy man expressed violence in his bearing his features and his physical strength yet also the mystical character of his race and I immediately thought of Saint John the Baptist in other words a man of nature a visionary a believer a precursor who came to announce one greater than himself. And then the last point is that this particular cast was commissioned by the Victoria and Albert Museum in 1881. And basically they managed to buy it through a subscription campaign. So they invited people to give donations in order to order this particular cast. And uh, Rodin even received extra money for this particular cast. So the reception 
in the UK, in the United Kingdom, was actually from day one quite positive towards this sculpture. And so as it had a warm response from the public, they decided to, uh, to cast and order their own copy uh, for the Victoria and Albert Museum. Thank you very much for watching. Please also go through our website and have a look at our weekly notes that accompany these videos. Uh, they're certainly well worth a read and where we expand on all the things that we're telling here in our videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.